Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, the first session, I can understand that is a little bit uh, hard. Uh, to the time to start, that's the first one is always the more com most complicated. Um, yes, is in English? Then, no, I want to set up the expectation of this session. First of all, is in English, not in German. And the second is an introduction an introduction to how to connect Vical and, in general, an overview of the problem. But in the presentation, you will not find deep dive on specific topic. You will not find tones of line of code or uh, X, X code for uh, firmware or something like that. Then, if you are a firmware guy or a developer guy, that is wrong. This is wrong section. This is introduction. Um, well, if it's fine for you, I would like to start. Agenda, yes, a, a small overview why we are talking about uh, Vical, why we is so famous right now, or is kind of hype. The hardware that you can use to do that, and how to use it. The software, how to build the software, or how to use software that already exists. And yeah, if it works, well, because that is the most uh, tricky part, some small demo, and show you eventually some hardware on that. But, first of all, what do you want? Why you want a connected car? What, what, what is the reason? Well, sometimes I receive funny answer, like, is, is, is nice color to have a connected car? No. Or, um, yeah, it's like I want to be social. Uh, my, my car is all the time alone, and I want to stay with the car connected, no, and so on. But I want to ask you why you are here. What is your interest? If anyone wants to tell me why you are interested in this session, well, I want to talk to you. Okay. Okay. Any other that's over there? Oh. <laughs> Loader. Ah, okay. Um, well, the, the question is uh, why you are here. The answer is I want to understand a little bit better what happened in my car. If it's. Yes. I see a couple of hands over there. I forgot. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, to have pressure of tire and fuel or speed or any other temperature, why not? Yeah, that's, that is fine. Yeah? Yes, that is one of the topics. Uh, yes, please. That's what you want to be faster uh, to find the right path. This is one case or faster because I want to drive faster. I want to... <laughs> or I want to be more efficient in the fuel, for example, to want to reduce my consumption. Yeah. I want to know how much money we can save, actually, by uh, Well, that is another wonderful uh, use case. I want to know how much can I save on money in different areas eventually. I can split in different, uh, on the car itself, on how to use, how to share eventually, because I can bring a use case that I can share the car, then I can reduce the cost. Yes? Yeah, what standards? <sighs> what standard I use it? Yes. Yes. Uh, what is the, well, what is the protocol? No, the usual typical protocol, hardware, communication, and so on. Yes. The reason, well, get uh, operational uh, alert and eventually suggestion how to be, what is the right behavior. Yes, that is a wonderful, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of my questions is, uh, and I have uh, Solar on my roof, and I want to load the car, and I want to know, is it full? Yes. So I, I produce my, 
electric energy, and then I want to schedule and make optimization on that to use no, to not lose because if it's the tricky part of a uh, cellar, no, it's not some cellar and electricity that come from a renewable that you are not able to store. Then, or you store in um, heating water, this is one of, one of the tricks, or you charge your car, or you charge the battery, but the battery are quite expensive. Sorry, it was something over there. Yeah. Okay, the answer is um, I, I want to get an advice on the safety area. No, uh, I have advice on incident I uh, had to my car or some hazard that are in my path. Yes, that's you cover most of them, uh, and we will see that we are in probably you are in the right uh, session. That is great. Uh, unfortunately, the um, connected car definition is not really uh, good today from my point of view. They say the only, okay, is equipped with the internet access. This is a connected car. If you try to figure out in the vocabulary this, this definition, that is much more. It's much more because if you start to think that in the Toyota car today, there are kind of 20 personal computers, no? One, more than one million lines of code, then it's not, probably it's not more. We, we have to change the name. It's not more a car, it's something else, no? Um, why the people? Well, why there is also interest? Because the expectation is to spend 117 bi uh, billion for 2020. That was uh, one or two years ago. They, they move a little bit ahead, but yes, the connected car uh, thinks is growing massively. No, and there is a lot of acquired today. Intel acquired no for 15 billions, Cisco for 1.4, and so on. That's huge interest, huge investment. Unfortunately, not many results right now, but we will see soon. Well, we already start to see something. We will see more and more in 2021, 22, because bring something in the car takes at least between four to six years. Then, if something started last year or two years ago, we will see into 2020. Then we will see in 2020 a huge revolution. Something is already there, but more will come. Based on, what, based on your answer, yes, we can identify uh, mainly this area. That, that is uh, the area that uh, the manufacturer is working on. Mobility management. No, uh, identify the best path to go to the work or the place that I want. No, uh, uh, that's end to hand then from my house, from my door to the parking then tell you where is the space. Eventually, in the future, you will be able to book the space, the parking slot, in the, in the place that you want to go. And more, uh, the system will tell you, eventually, if you have to change, no, you are parked and you can bring a bike, or now a scooter, or something like that. That's complete integration of the, your journey. Commerce. Uh, that's, that's, there is a, obviously, this is um, really interesting for, for many parts. You know, uh, I'm in the car, I can buy my stuff and not go to the supermarket. Or go to the supermarket, that's something that is already existing in the US. You go to the supermarket with your car, you order in your car, you find everything there, you put in your trunk, and you go home. There is many others on the commerce. No, you can buy. Movie, that, that is already possible, no, you do with your phone. Why you cannot, the, my passenger, not able to see a movie in the, in the, in the back? Um, ve vehicle management. Vehicle management has a lot of uh, stuff, no, from the condition, no, we talk about uh, uh, if something happened, but in special way, collect all the data to make, to make uh, today is, is a huge topic, uh, to predict that you will have a failure. No, because I will be able to collect all the data of all the models like you, and then, based on machine learning and other, other way, I will predict that your car needs to be repaired in a specific time. Then, to avoid, that's no longer a fixed time that you bring every year the car to the service, but eventually to bring when it's really needed. 
And when you bring to the service, the service will be able to, um, it doesn't have to spend time because all information are already there. There are several projects that um, want to send all this information to the service, book the service for you, and mainly to reduce the time to keep the car stop it in the service. In, no, that minimize the time. That could be today is eight hours, tomorrow could, could be two hours, right? You can make a shop, you know, buy something, and bring your car home. Safety. Safety is a huge topic. Uh, no, from recognition of the object on the street, talk with other cars, receive information, you know, uh, help the driver, you know, help the driver in several conditions. When you are not able to, to see because the condition, there is fog, there is rain, or uh, you don't understand your street that is too small, is slippery, and so on. That is, you know, can see a lot of stuff. And the last one, also, we already mentioned a little bit, collect data. Something that is already exists in many countries, the insurance. If you adopt a black box in your car, you have a discount. But data today is a value. Everyone wants data. Then uh, probably today, the, more, the most attention is to understand your behavior. Because from that, you can build a lot of commerce stuff. Yes. Yes, true, but I don't have. <laughs> and uh, well, in Germany, probably a little bit more than other countries. But probably there are a huge percent with that have. Um, but usually, you need insurance. The the country side, the state, yes, yeah. But in general, if you have to make an insurance on the car, well, there is a lot of logic that, um, and the, the, the insurance starts to, to give you this deal. If you want, you can make a small box where we detect if you are driving the right way. And then, in this way, I can, I can be sure that you are a good driver. And then I can apply a discount for you. Well, if you have one million, probably, you don't have the, the Volkswagen Polo, and you have, you have also other type of car that has already all this system. Um, all the, the use case that we have found, um, or rather that we have seen, um, you, you, we can collect in five categories. No, vehicle to infrastructure, the, the vehicle I have to talk with the surround. Vehicle to vehicle, no, car to car. Um, vehicle to pedestrian, this is something I didn't see yet, but no, advise the pedestrian somehow, and vice versa. And okay, that's, that's the last one, vehicle to everything that's uh, connected to IoT, connect to solar power, uh, no, that's, that's uh, no, to regulate the charging, and, uh, and uh, today the most used is vehicle to the cloud, or better, vehicle to some, some server that is outside. And then we will see more of this case today. No, we will not spend time on the other. Um, first question that is uh, connected um, on, on what is the protocol and so on. How can I talk? How can I get data from my car? Well, that's, I know that in Germany is quite famous, um, this, this uh, series. Uh, that was f uh, simple for him because he was able to talk, really, to talk with the car. Uh, but do you have any idea about to talk with the car? Do you have any suspicious on how to do it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. No, that, that's, um, I want to repeat, uh, that was, yes, in the 80s was several, not only Audi, also Renault has this system uh, to drive and give you indication. And in Renault, it didn't work very well. And that, that's, everyone dropped at the end. 
uh, for several reasons. That was not the right time. Um, yeah, this is what uh, a, a small a small thing that is not related to the car connected. But yes, the next next interface no is a couple of years that is we are talking voice interface. Then we will see a lot of voice interface. You will see a lot of voice in your car, especially in 2022 with also some, probably a little bit before, that is already there, but is a little bit uh, unstructured. No, some cars has two voice system recognition. No, there are some cars because you have a navigation that has own, and the body and so on has another one, and then another one. And then when you want to activate the navigation, you just have to say, okay, navigation, but this is an one, and the other one is car, and another one, and so on. That, that there are several things to do that is ongoing. And we will see yeah, a lot of voice in the car and also some face recognition. I believe the Kia already has in the market that you sit on your car, the car recognizes yourself, and then set up your you know, seat, mirrors, and everything around you. That, that's, we will see more and more integration on that. That will be a lot of fun. But yeah, we cannot use the voice at the moment. Uh, we will see in 2022. And we have a friend in the car that started um, in, I believe, what we can see later in the 1998, the first car, or 1996, um, to adopt the CAN bus. CAN bus is an industrial bus that is a transport. We are talking about the transport. In the car, you have an ECU that is an electronic control unit that you can think, uh, no, ABS or also the light that is controlled by an ECU in the car today. And then you can have up to, there are some cars that has 80 ECU connected to the bus. And then uh, at the end of this bus, usually you have the OBD that is our onboard diagnostics. That was good. Well, CAN bus is not really your friend. It's not friendly at all. It's not friendly at all because, um, well, it's only a transport, and no, and you will not find the specification of the, your car on the protocol and on the, that means the timing of the of the frequency and, in special way, the code, the code that is used at exchange between the ECU. There is a nice book that is a good start if you are interested. It's uh, free that you can download. That, that is, is great. Uh, and then you can understand a little bit better all this, all this topic. Uh, it's not big. That's, uh, I don't remember if it's 40 or 50 pages and give you example and also instruction and so on. You will find, I believe, the slide. I will upload the slide on the website. Um, today, do you think... Okay, I, I, should, I should cancel this one. That's... that's should be a, a question. Do you think that you have only one CAN bus in your car? Yes. Yes, in the car. How many in the? 36. It seems too much. Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, today, well, in general, you have at least three, at least. Uh, one for, well, what his name is, funny for me, comfort. That means in, info entertainment, air conditioning, and so on. And usually it's a low speed. Then you have usually two high speed. In most of the car today, yes, it's a little bit more, but not so much. Um, one for the body, no, the lights and I don't know, the sensor of the rain and so on, and one for the system, then the engine, no, that that's, are separated. These buses usually are connected between a, a, con, a firewall, a gateway, that is a void to talk each other, no, that's a void to inject command directly to uh, other elements. But this is a long story. Uh, based on the structure of the, the message of the CAN bus, you don't have really an address, but you talking about message. Then you write in message. You don't, you don't know exactly who is the... You, do, you don't have source and destination. And for this reason, there is a unit that's probably in your comfort, that usually is also your dashboard. 
you want to know the speed, but the speed is in another canvas, and then you need a, someone that is route this message. For this reason, there is a unit that permit the transfer of only the message that is needed on the other bus. But going back, yes, canvas is not really your friend. Who is your friend? The OBD. OBD is a long story, no starting from 92, no BMW started with X series in the 88, uh, this CAN bus was 84 from Bosch, more or less. And no, slowly in US, but also in Europe, uh, was introduced and standardized, and yes, and the state and government no, uh, apply some rules that have to be present. That standardized means there is a set of code, a set of code that is, uh, uh, yeah, you, you can get, uh, that are uh, documented, that you can read, and um, you can build uh, your system. Where it is? That you will find in your car usually is in under, under the dashboard, no, under the cluster, no, on, and has a 16 pin. And most of the time, you will have only two. Or better, four, two are the signal because the CAN bus is really similar to the bus RS482 or something like that. And yes, you have no high and low, and eventually the ground and the, and the power if you need, and then you can connect there. Then you can connect, and you will see all the messages, at least all the OBD messages that you will have a, a X code, and then you will be able because this is documented to get. No, typical is, or better, typical. Uh, OBD, unfortunately, had several stages, then it changed uh, quite a bit. But fortunately, all the devices today are able to support all the protocol. That the message should be 11 um, bit for the identification, 64 bit for the message. The first one, the first byte, is the size of the message. The second is the type, and the third one is the PID. Um, I, to go back, what is the PID? Mainly the measurement that you want to read. And after that, you have the value. Example, OK, identification, request, then identification answer. No, you have the size, you have the mode. Oh, sorry, the mode is over there. Oh, so this is the, uh, the, the mode, the PID, and then the value. Then translated, the car is going for 50 km per hour. Done. Simple. If you don't have, eh, that's you have to use a, a typical uh, no, dumping that you probably did on the TCP, do on the same on the CAN bus. No. And then, after that, good luck. Search on the internet, but I have to say, most of the car user, well, as a, as a no, going back, the car, um, uh, they are not forced to use all the PAD defined, and they, they can also define some of PAD uh, by their own, own for some specific of the car. But most of the time, you will find the, the definition of this specific one. Perfect. Now, we know where is the, the, the yes. You know, uh, where is the port? Uh, we know more or less the protocol. We know where to get the information. Now the problem is, where is the hardware? Well, because it's so funny, you will find a lot of hardware. And because it's not so complicated, uh, eventually, if you are uh, an electronic engineer, you can build. Why not? Then you can buy uh, MCP 2515 and uh, 25, oh, sorry, that's uh, the other one uh, that I don't remember, that you need two. One is the receiver, one is the controller. A couple of dollars, and then you can build your reader. Uh, if you don't want, you can buy a car for Arduino or for a Raspberry Pi. I use normally the PyCan. PyCan is great, that you put, start, is able to get everything, and is able to sync. One of the most tricky part, as I said before, is the delay of the signal inside of the bus to find the, the right triggering and so on. That's the pine, you put the pi can two, and this is starting. One interesting part of the pi can two, this is without. Um, there is a model that there is a small converter here, 
then you can read power from the bus, and then you can uh, put the power on the Raspberry Pi. That means that you don't need to supply power to the Raspberry Pi that you can get from the, the OBD. You can buy, there is tons of dongles. USB, serial, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and, and so on. And then you put there, and then you can read from your phone. Then, as we said, you will read something like that. You can write sometimes also something. Then you can drive. You can, first of all, control your cluster or build your new cluster, your new dashboard. There are companies that is building only dashboard. No, fancy dashboard, they build a dashboard for you, you can make a specification, and you can download, that's the basic one are for free, and then uh, you, you can really make a lot of fun in your car if you want. Okay, any question on this point? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know right now. I have to think on that. Because BMW worked a long time for entertainment. Now in the aircraft, it's just been installed for multimedia. Well, I didn't understand very well, but it seems the car wants to move more on TCP. Hmm. Bus. This seems that will be the next step because that means they can move on the, oh, we said 100 millions of line of code, then is a lot of software. And working with QNX or firmware is slow down a lot of process of development. And then also innovation. Then moving to uh, a sub stack of TCP, probably you can convert in a more microservice infrastructure. The most runs on a rail. Most runs on a rail. Yes, 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 yes. That's that's the point. That what is interesting for the all no that we have also others uh, K blah 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 bus right. Um, yeah, that will be one of the point, more or less next when you have to send the data. That's have a, a um, optimized bus, a lightweight when I can get the data, put in a packet in binary way. I can send because, okay, we are talking 5G. We have Vodafone that is make uh, in Germany. I've seen a lot of advertising and also in other countries. Then it seems that 5G would be everywhere and so on. It's not true. It's not absolutely true. If you are happy, you will have 100 kilobyte. Could be, no. And then yes, I, I will agree with you that we should go back to something that is really optimized on the bus. A mobile bus can be. Uh, but at the moment, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have a really an answer on. It's better we move there. I don't know. We're running shortly in a bottleneck. Yes, I, this is my expectation. Yes. Yeah. I've seen uh, no um, checksums in the protocol and no verification of sender. So the bus, uh, each bus uh, element trusts the other one that the sender is valid. So what's about the injection? Well, that's I, 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 far away from the car security. Uh, that's, that's now I'm working in in completely different direction. Yeah, yes, and this is why the Jeep received a fine, a ticket two or three years ago, of two hundred thousand. That is not much uh, for um, because was the car was insecure. What happened in U.S. Uh, someone was able to hack the radio, and from the radio able to hack them. Yes, and then was able to, uh, to steer the wheel, accelerate, and so on. For this reason, no. The most important is the unit, the firewall in unit that connect the bus between. But if you are physically able to attach to the bus, yes, no chance. Um, there are some. I, I'm. I, I don't know. That's uh, about the security, to increase the security than the trustability between the part. But in the beginning, at least until five, ten years ago, the trust was because you are not able to reach that component, right? That's OBD, also OBD is not able to go everywhere. 
But today, the things are changing a lot because from your radio, you want to see more and more. No? That's no. If you turn off the car and you remove the battery, probably is a, is a safe car, yes. Well, a ton yes, um, the the autonomous driving and so on is is still in no in the process to be we we will see a lot. Well, this is a no a typical that have to be because of you need um, eventually to be able to you know, intervene. No, but uh, on that area, I'm I'm uh, still I'm quite confused. They are quite free in China. It's completely free. Oh, that China is uh, wonderful. It's great. <laughs> well, on that and that side is great. Now, after that, you are not able to send one bit outside China. But this is a different topic. Yes. Um, but yeah. Um, for but we are not covering the um, um, what is the autonomous driving right now. We are only talk about collect data. Then we collect the data. Now we have to send the data. Now, this is the second problem. Wonderful, no, wonderful the screen. But probably you are here because you don't want that only. Um, great. As an OBD, you will find a lot of um, hardware that is able to connect to the internet or to have uh, LTE or narrow bandwidth IoT and so on. Then you can connect to your Arduino like ESP32 or um, Raspberry Pi. And then you can start uh, to send data. Most of this module has, uh, in most of the t most of the time, also GPS or better, GNSS. No, that is a superset of GPS. In in inside, then there's a really small chip that has everything inside. Sometimes also a Bluetooth, a low power Bluetooth, and then you can put a connection. Perfect. That's. Uh, Great. No GPS. There is a GPSD that he, the, in, with the GPSD you don't have to care about the device. No, it's done by GPSD. GPSD is exposed to you a standard interface. You can buy the device that you want. It's talking to the device. Make also some optimization, and then with a the client you can uh, you can um, query the GPSD. Then you can get all the information that you want. Two lines, two lines of code done. Great. And then I have OBD, I have GPS. Sometimes in the, in the device there is also accelerometer and so on. With Linux, the life is super easy if you have a driver. Because most of then, if you want to buy and you build, if you want to build, check if there, there is a driver. And if you want to use the Raspberry or Linux base, check if you have the QMI interface. Because in this case, the device will be a simple network interface for you. Then if it's a network interface, you have an IP, you can do like a normal programming, right? Open the interface. You can put also a web server inside and then answer from outside if you want. Sometimes not all the information are exposed through the interface. Now the QMI, most of the time, are not implementing you know, all the, the functioning on the functions, but the most, most important IP is you know, always implemented. Perfect. If you don't have the QMI interface, the life starts to be a little bit more complicated. Why? Because these devices are able to understand only AT command. No, we are in the 80s. No, that you have to send to a serial line AT something. Right. <laughs> it never changed. <laughs> for someone, it never changed. Yes. Well, for me, it's changed. Well, it was, and I move a little bit. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's true, but I don't have to write, right? This is the point. No, the point that they raise is anyway, the kernel is doing something like that. Because anyway, is the interface of the module. Um, yes and no. Well, uh, there is a couple of uh, small difference anyway. But uh, if you don't have, most of the time you have a nice book with all the command, and probably it's difficult to find a, a library that is imp implementing the communication with your module, then pay a lot of attention on that. Um, 
At the moment, uh, we are lucky because uh, mo more or less we, there are two producers and then uh, we start to see the, the, the library and then um, we'd be more simple to use. But you will have uh, to write all uh, AT command and the device will implement it for you some, some protocol like HTTP, MQTT, FTP. Then you will send AT command to open a connection and then you have to handle the protocol that you want to use because no, you build and then you put in a buffer and you send. Then we, it's a lot of work today. It's going a little bit better because you can find a lot of examples, but it's not like I use the call, make the query to the website, it's done, one line. It's, it's a little bit more, but it's fine. Any question? <laughs> Perfect. Um, Probably you want something more. Probably you want something more on the... Uh, checking the time. Um, you want to collect some, not only the car, uh, but, well, the position, the acceleration, the gyroscope. The accelerator has a, a, can give you a lot of use cases, really interesting. In the bike, a lot of of them, because if you go on, on uh, you can calculate your lean and your um, deviation of the back based on the, the front, and then you understand the perfect lean that you can use, then there is a lot of, uh, of things that you can do that is in the bike is really nice. But also temperature of the, no, in vehicle, no, like open the window if it's too hot and all this stuff automatically. Then you can put on top, uh, also in this case, there are tons of the device. You can talk with IC2, I2C, with a couple of lines of code. In case of Python, you can receive all the information of the gyroscope, and then uh, you can build something. Um, data, then we collect GPS, OBD. I, I want to collect everything that I can. Eventually, you can also you know, connect some digital input-output, uh, like uh, if I want to control the start and stop of the car, then you can intercept the, the, the line. And then we go back on the bus and the optimization. Yes, uh, everyone is thinking that you have 5G or 4G or LTE 100, 100 megabytes per second in your car all the time. That is not true. Then the protocol and handle the protocol, handle the disconnection, handle the retry, handle the Duplication of the messaging case. This is the, the hard part that you have to do on the device. That usually is not, is not covered. You can decide, no, if you want to build your solution, no. We decide the hardware, we see how to interact with the hardware, collect the data, now we have to build the famous packet. We have to send the data over there. We can decide to do with the UDP. That's UDP, put a complete binary one, or hexadecimal binary format, super optimized, then you decode on the back-end server. You don't have, no. Then also the processing in the car is low, because you get the bus and you send. Then, if it's the bus optimized, you send a small quantity of data. Then, also if you are in GPRS coverage, you don't have problem. You can use, no, some, some devices using the OBD format, um, that uh, they, they, they convert in text and they send the text to, to simplify. Sometimes because they visualize also inside of the card and is already decoded and they send it this way. Or in the JSON format. That, that's uh, simplify your backend because you can get the JSON and put in no SQL and then you can run the query without any problem. Obviously, no, that's increased the size of the packet and sometimes uh, no, uh, is, a, is a, a bandwidth problem. For you will find um, on the open hardware, no, you can buy also devices that is doing like that where they claim to be open. And the open is you can decide the endpoint to send the data. You cannot change the firmware. You cannot make any operation in the firmware. But there is tons of devices. One of them, one of my preferred is Teltronica that is uh, not far away from here. Um, but you cannot change the firmware and they, they can send the data and they have their own format, binary format, and you will see everyone has their own binary format. There's tons of binary format. There is no really specification on that. Um, there is some, some work ongoing, uh, OpenSeq or something like that, that they try to uh, have an open 
protocol for IoT devices to, to exchange the message. Great. Uh, that we have seen GPS, GNS, GNSS, um, OBD, and sensor. You, if you want to build, you mainly you have two choices. Uh, one is a Raspberry Pi. One is I want to. I will go it for ASP32 because there are a lot of support and integration. Okay, Raspberry give you probably if you come from the development uh, high level with the high level languages like Python, Java, Go, or JavaScript, what do you want? Uh, probably Raspberry is much more simple for you. The drawback has a high cons uh, energy consumption. The SSP is a little bit uh, cheaper. No, well, we can talk a difference between the two solutions, probably of uh, 40, 50 euros between a solution based on SP, probably less on one based on a, on a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, you have much more uh, capacity in calculation, but the energy is a huge problem. In SP, you have most of, um, in hardware, a little bit more complicated to program, but when the device is going to sleep or in high, half hybrid state, you will have like five million pair of consumption. That is close to nothing for a car. Or eventually there are devices on the market that they put a small battery there that can uh, survive for several days, right? That that is uh, is great. And then as as soon there is a movement on the car, it wake up and send the data. Then then uh, in SP is much more optimized than and this is uh, mainly the usual 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 story between the difference between Raspberry Pi and Arduino. No? That is much more uh, hardware oriented Arduino, Raspberry Pi is a little bit more oriented on the on the development. Then you can build you can build something that we described for seventy euros. Uh, up to 120, depends if you want to use LTE, if you want to use um, something that uh, has more uh, um, uh, features. But we are talking about, uh, yeah, well, 100 euros or, or less. You can buy. If you don't want to build, you can buy. You can buy from Freematics. Freematics is an open source company. That's, that's uh, all the specifications are available. And they start from, I believe, with the radio 70 uh, Australian dollars. They are Australian, up to 120 with the GNSS, uh, with ceramic uh, antenna and so on. Uh, there is another Denmark company that they start a similar business. Uh, they are based on Raspberry. In that case, the first one is based on ASP. Uh, and then I believe they start from 170. And then you can buy, and then everything is there. There is also some soft example software, and then you can start to play. Fine. Uh, I will, OK, we have the data. We receive the data. How we receive the data? What we can do? Um, yes, usually UDP, HTTP is on embedded, is most used. Um, but from my point of view, the right things to do is with MQTT. MQTT, in this way, you, you set up a, a, subscri a subscription that eventually you can so send also command back, but this is another story. Then you can now get the broker, save the data in your database, uh, put some stuff from OpenStreetMap that you can make the map, you can make the route, and then with uh, some microservices, or you can build some program that is subscribed to MQTT event to a specific topic, then you can create topic like alert, uh, normal information, and so on. Then when you have alert, then you wake up and you send a notification message. That is, is, quite, is quite simple. Some use case, what you can do. Well, the first one that I did is, OK, when I stop the car, go out of the car, on my phone, I put locked. That doesn't happen anything exactly in the car. I put in the database that the machine, the car is locked. Then as soon as the car is moving and that there is a flag that is locked, I receive an alarm because it means that someone is stolen the car. Or anyway, someone is hitting the bike eventually. Um, if it's the car, no, when I, I give the car to my children, that is not true, my children doesn't have the license, but this is the typical use case. Uh, you want that they stay in a specific area, that you want to be advised when they go out in some, or if they go too fast, right, with the car and so on. Um, 
well, sometimes you want to track all your trips and then you know, review and understand why your consumption, you know, the fuel consumption, and what was your speed, what was really your speed, why you, you spent three hours to go somewhere. Check the status, you know, receive the pressure, the water level, and so on, that we receive an alarm that, oh, yes, it's not turning on, but it's really close, right? That's before that to have a surprise that is turning on when you have a trip. The best would be you no know, prediction, uh, prediction that's uh, connected with where you are, with the traffic that is around you, and give you advice and suggestion. Um, and eventually, you can you can be a little bit more social, you know that you can share that where is your car with your friend and stop together to drink a beer. That that's. Uh, there is also one of my colleagues uh, with a bike. Uh, he made a small module that he is, a, is able to chat with the bike, and the bike has a small uh, intelligence that is able to answer. I say, "How are you? Oh, well, very well. My fuel level, anyway, is 20 percent. Then please, next time, stop to to refill." Right? That that's you can you can do a lot of stuff. You, yeah, then. You can build your monster. This is the, the, the topic. If you don't want to build your monster, there is several tons of application, open application that can do these things for you. One is the Thinksbore. Thinksbore is um, uh, a complete open source IoT platform um, that is able to handle um, vehicle, but also industrial system. And then you can create your graphical interface and, and build your, your dashboard as you want, and then collect all the data and then analyze your data. I want to give you a real end example on that. We take a little bit of time. Let me check. Probably this one, yes. This is in the San Francisco area, tracking the bus. No, you can see, warning, the bus crosses speed. It's going too fast. No, and it stopped it. It's arrived to the right stop. And, and the fuel, no, you can see the fuel of the, bi or the bus. No, and eventually you can make an estimation. You will run out of, in this area, and in that area there is, or stop before, no, make, a trip and then identify where is the best way or the best place to make the, the, the refill. And yes, and this is and then you can see where is the bus, which is the bus number, the speed in real time. Then you send the data there, there is a Cassandra plus a Postgres, then there is all, then you can install where you want, you can use the service or you can install in your server. And then immediately you have a yes. Potentially, yes. That should be life, yes. But this is not mine. I will show you mine. Let me... Uh, this is the uh, device. Uh, this is another thing. Uh, related. Let me check. Okay, and we can jump to... This is a live data. This is data from this device. I will show you. I will show later, but this is GPS antenna, and this is a 80 euros device, more or less. And then you can see that we are sending the data. Now I accelerate, no, because I move it, and then, yeah, there is the okay. This is the 
temperature of the device. This is one of the biggest problems, especially in SP. No, that is the heating, the heating for the radio system. Radio system is generating a lot of heating, especially if you don't have the antenna that has to use a lot of power to, to send. And then the overall, yeah, uh, and the position and uh, several other stuff. Uh, and let me, let me check. Uh, can see some of my trips. with the speed, tracking speed, acceleration, and so on, and yes, and, and when you stop it for a long, and like something like that. That is free, no, you can get and customize as you want. That is a small server that you can download, install where you want, and eventually put more data that you want there. Then if, without no, building all the system that I said before, set up a Mosquito for MQTT or HTTP, save the data, and, and, and so on. That, that's his, I said, two, there are many other. No, you can, well, this is, I said, this is a registered one. I can, uh, in this case, I don't have, um, uh, speed, no, that's, uh, can put some satellite, for example. Yeah, satellites. I had all the time six satellites. I had all the time the position, and this one, yes. And now I'm moving a little bit, and then I receive in real time all the data without any problem. I can connect to the device and then get the data directly from the device as well because it is exposed to wi uh, Wi Fi. Then I can connect to the device. At the moment, I'm using my another Wi-Fi because I don't have, well, my SIM card seems not working here in Germany. I have to understand a little bit, but has a SIM card inside that is able to send the data. What is the nice part? Um, I can show you. That could be is more. No, that you can see. We send all the data. This is a, no, I'm connected through the console. That is the data that we are sending. Uh, that's we sending more or less 168 kilobyte with all the information. You can see that time to time, anyway, I fail. No, when you are in a small and bad, that sending the data is really a problem. No, the connection is the problem. Then you have to think all the of the system on that. Uh, that's I can switch from. Oops, uh, should be something here. Uh, that is the module. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I can switch from from Wi Fi sending the data now, save building. Redeploy, now we should uh, use the internal, the internal radio. Another big advantage of ASP and so on is uh, you don't have to care about the file system, file system or Raspberry, that, that usually you have a fixed image and you copy on the, on the bootstrap uh, all the time because that you, you don't want to have a corruption on the file system. Yes, GNS. Is okay. That you can see now we have an AP. Then I can. And is, I'm able to connect to the device. And yes, now it's scanning OBD. I don't have OBD. Then we'll take a little bit. And then we will try to connect to the network and then start to send the data. Um, if it's not able to do that, because okay, I'm also saving all the trays in the in the device. I have a small SD card of 32 gigabyte. No, yes. For that, um, yes, now is, is try to connect to the cell line. No, uh, didn't work. No service, power off. I don't have data, I'm not able to read. GNS is not changing, power off. 
I'm moving. I wake up immediately. That will take more or less nothing. Um, that is great. Uh, as I said, everything is great. Uh, you can find a lot of software that you can start to use software that is already on the market uh, in a couple of minutes. Then the market has a lot of stuff uh, and that you don't have to write all the time everything. Um, yes, we have seen two of them. There is also others like Tracker. Tracker is another um, quite well-known uh, system to track uh, all the device and also Handle has already inside all the um, management for fleet that you can uh, handle driver, car, manu maintenance of the device. Everything is there and it is able to support tons of devices. Uh, oh, yes. There is also Mindflux that is mainly an interface for analyze the data. Uh, there is a Tinger, that is another interface to analyze the data. The demo we have done. What else? Well, if you have time, you can start to put some camera and make uh, image recognition today is super simple as well. 20 line of code if you want to do that with open VC or other, other stuff. Then you can put and put and then go into that, the recognizers are on your street. You can put voice as well. But everything is nice. Don't forget that you are connected. Then potentially everyone can hack you. Challenge, usually the challenge is GPS takes quite a while or better. Turn on the car, I start, the GPS probably is not there. Especially if the catalog is outdated. Then can take 10, 15 seconds, that most of the time is fine, but you have also a bootstrap. Then uh, and then when you started, that's, that's is difficult for GPS to catch the, back the, 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 the data. Network the, the mobile, we already said, that is not so stable as you expected. It's not stable at all, I like to say. Then you have to put uh, several things around and figure out for duplication of the data or how to recover the data if you need. You have to identify the frequency of the data that you want probably every second, no, everyone starts, oh, I want everything, and I want for each millisecond, but probably you don't need. Power consumption, power consumption is the big part. If you want to have a real, no, you want to know where is parked your car, then the car somehow have to be connected, that have to be alive, have to be able to answer, that means that there is something that has power, right? This is, you have to supply power. Heating can be another problem that is much better if you are use external antenna on all these small devices. And in the bike there is no official OBD because at the moment the law is not forcing to have an OBD, a really OBD. That's most of the time they, the code on, on the bus of the bike are proprietary. But that's most of the vendors that started to discover that, but someone is not, is not clear. I believe that's I hope I gave you an uh, introduction on this topic, and I believe there are only two minutes or less for questions. That is good for me, probably bad for you. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much.